Well, hello everyone. Dan Hurd with Dan Hurd Prospecting here. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome. I hope to earn your subscription today. I am here at Pickerton. Pickerton in the winter time. It is the end of December. Just finished Christmas time. Merry Christmas, everyone. End of December, and I've come to Pickerton to play for a few days. Now for the first video I'm going to take here, one of the most common things that people want to know or the reasons they watch my videos or my channel is to find out where to find gold. Why gold deposits in certain spots, what rivers have the most gold in it, why a river would have gold, all that kind of stuff. Well in today's video I hope to enlighten you a little bit more on all that. I hope you enjoy. This video is a direct response to one of my patrons' requests. One of my patrons asked me, said, Dan, can you explain why the Fraser has so much gold and what the geology is there at Pickerton or the Fraser that deposits so much gold? Because yes, the Fraser is frickin' loaded. Well, the geology of the Fraser River would be an entire university course all on its own, but I think I know the gist of what you're asking and I think I can cover that here. Both the geology of the Fraser itself, where it comes from, all that kind of stuff, and the geology here at Pickerton itself, and maybe why there's so much gold right here. Let's start with talking about the Fraser River itself. The Fraser River is frickin' huge. Huge. This river drains the Rocky Mountains, or more importantly drains the west half of the Rocky Mountains here in Canada. So, from the Great Divide west, all the water that is melting or coming out of the hills is being funneled down the Fraser. The Fraser goes all the way up one side of the Rockies, turns around and comes all the way down through the rest of the province. And it travels for thousands of miles. Kilometers, miles, doesn't matter, a long, long way. So the biggest reason these gravels are so, so loaded with gold is it is collecting gold from a huge swath of land the entire province of British Columbia. Any gold that is released anywhere out there, well, doesn't really eventually make it back to the Fraser, but has the potential to make it into the Fraser River. The gold that is in these gravels could have come from anywhere. Could have washed thousands of kilometers downriver. And the other reason that the Fraser has so much is those right there. The mountains. Not necessarily those mountains, but all the mountains around. The Rocky Mountains. The Pacific Plate crashes into the continental shelf, creating a huge up uplift and creating massive mountains all through BC. And those mountains there, and the Rockies of course, create the perfect environment, the perfect geology for gold. The uplifting hot spots down below, creating huge thermal geological events underneath, boiling off waters that are deep down in the earth. Those waters are percolating up and depositing gold. How they deposit gold, that's a whole nother video all on its own. But BC has the perfect geology for depositing gold because of the crashing plates into each other, one subduction zone and creating heat, pushing up hot waters, creating all sorts of quartz veins off to find one tree. Creating all sorts of quartz veins loaded in mineralization. Those are up in the mountains, or all around, and they get eroded down into the rivers and all of the rivers here in BC, basically, the majority of them, flow into the Fraser. And the Fraser flows down right past Pickerton. Neat thing about the Fraser River is it basically doesn't matter where you dig. You put your shovel into the ground anywhere along the Fraser and you will come up with gold. Could be tiny, could be a small amount, but there is gold everywhere on the Fraser. Now the actual rock type that the Fraser's flowing through that's uh, eroding and creating the gravels, it could be anything. It runs through basically everything you can imagine. Sedimentary, igneous, metamorphic, any kind of rock you can think of, at some point the Fraser is running through it. 
And that's why in the Fraser you can find anything. Now here at Pickerton, the rock type is a shale or a slate. Now if you don't know the difference between that, shale, shale and slate are basically the same rock. It's just one has been heated and pressed, the other one isn't. It's a sedimentary, it's, it's sort of sand and mud layers sort of layered together, pressed down, made into a rock. And if it gets heated under lots of pressure, it turns into slate. If not, it's just shale. And this here, I believe, is just a shale. Now up on the surface where the shale is getting weathered, it breaks off into these slabs, these shards, which are razor sharp here, and uh, it, it breaks in these big plates. But more importantly, when it's way down deep underground and still being held together by pressure, it can also break apart as hot fluids force their way up from below. It forces in this mixture of quartz and heavy metals forces it into cracks, those cracks push apart, and it deposits these quartz seams. Not always depositing seams. Sometimes it makes cracks that have no room to deposit, or they deposit other, like calcite that weathers away. It makes these big cracks underground. Some of them, some of the geological events, are filling up the cracks with quartz and other minerals. That's where the gold comes from. But you can see my shale here has these great big vertical cracks all over the place. They're everywhere. Those are formed deep, deep down when the rock is still held together. All the linear cracks that you see here, that's formed up on the surface when the rocks lose the pressure that's holding them together and start to weather. The biggest gold I found here on Pickerton have been in these big cracks that go sideways across the river, not the little cracks that go lengthwise with the river. Yet the majority of the smaller flakes and pickers and small pickers have been in those linear cracks. So it depends on what I'm looking for. If I want to find the really big stuff, I should focus on the big cracks. But if I want volume, I should focus on the little cracks. One of the big nuggets I found was, oh where are we? I think right there in that crack there one of those big horizontal cracks. And actually there was a lot of gold in that crack when I cleaned it out. I still have more work to do on these cracks. Now the other question is why does Pickerton have so much gold? That I can't really tell you. I don't rightly know. It's possibly something to do with all of this mineralized quartz that's around here. It is possible the gold at Pickerton is actually weathering out of the rocks that are right here. That is very unlikely at most placer claims. Very unlikely that you actually find the source of the gold. But the fact that I find so much gold at Pickerton here, but if I go up a river a kilometer, I find almost none. If I go down river, a couple kilometers to my next claim, I find gold, but it's mostly river, more river run, smaller, flatter. Here at Pickerton, I'm finding thousands of pickers, okay, hundreds of pickers, and dozens of nuggets. So the gold here has not traveled all that far, in my opinion. Another common question I get about Fraser gold in general is why is it so flat? Well, that is kind of related to the answer about the geology of the Fraser itself. The gold has traveled, in many cases, for hundreds if not thousands of kilometers or miles. And as it travels, it gets squished between rocks. It's tumbling down the bottom of the river, one big rock stops, a piece of particle of gold stops against it, another rock hits into that particle of gold, and it squishes it. Because it's so malleable and so soft, it squishes it down into these flakes. The reason that the gold in the Fraser is so flat is it's traveled a long ways down a very violent river that's moving lots of rock. And those gold particles have been beat to crap by the moving rocks, the moving water, and they get squished into these really, really flat flakes.
Now, hopefully while I've been talking here, I've been able to include lots of pictures of gold and the slate and me panning and all sorts of stuff like that from Pickerton, because I know it's kind of boring just watching me talk. Hopefully listening to me is not too bad. So to sum that all up, the reason there's so much gold in the Fraser is it is huge and it drains thousands, millions, if not billions of square kilometers. And it's collecting the gold from all of that area. The geology of BC is perfect for hydrothermal deposits of gold. Hot water bubbling up below the Rockies, making these quartz seams that have lots of minerals in them that get eroded into their rivers. The Fraser being the biggest river in BC, it concentrates all the smaller rivers into one that flows down depositing gold all along its gravel bars. The geology of Pickerton here is all this shale or slate that's breaking up. It has quartz seams all throughout those hydrothermal seams of quartz, all throughout that could have gold in them, but uh, not positive on that. The shale creates these horizontal big cracks that have been collecting gold over the years as the water was up here, old, old gold. It has these vertical or with the river smaller cracks that's collecting all the smaller stuff in it and quite possibly this area was the bottom of the river at one time so that's why there's so much big gold here or it is eroding right out of these quartz seams itself that could be another reason why there's so much big gold here i haven't figured that one out and gold in the fraser is so flat because it gets beat down flat by all the rolling rocks down in the river and squishing the gold between them and it gets beat flat and smooth that's why it looks like it does. In a nutshell, that is the geology of the Fraser, the geology of Pickerton, and why there's so much gold, flat gold, right here. Now for the rest of today and all day tomorrow, I have hoofed in the big high banker with the big pump, and I'm going to be high banking for uh, basically a full day to see if we can get a bunch of pickers from Pickerton. Mike Astral and Pete are joining me tomorrow, so I got some grunt work to do all the sho heavy shoveling. And I'll just sit back and, you know, drink my coffee and order them around or something like that. No. I'll be right in there too. So tonight I'm gonna work till dark. I'm gonna get the high banker fired up and leveled and everything for the guys to be ready tomorrow. And maybe even do a good run tonight. Uh, if I get a run in tonight before it gets dark, I'll leave a picture here of what I get. So I am now panning by headlamp. Oh, bright. The Olight Piran headlamp. Very bright little thing. Uh, so it's probably time for me to head her out, out of here. But there's the gold I got in an hour run on the sluice. So not very much. No pickers. No pickers. A few hundred specks, but they don't add up to much. There's maybe a tenth of a gram there. So I was in the wrong spot. I was in the little trench right there beside the high banker, it was not producing. So tomorrow, I think I'm gonna try right there. I have a lot of hose here today, so I can actually go way up top if I want to. And that might be fun too. I just got a message that Mike can't make it, so hopefully Pete will be here tomorrow. A flashlight on a flashlight, look at that. There's the Piran, the Olight Piran headlamp. It's brighter than the last headlamp I featured from Olight, and just as functional, magnetic charging, uh, multiple settings, bright, dim, ultra bright. It is crazy how bright this thing is. Let me turn it on. There it is on ultra bright mode and wow, it lights up everything. Oh, look at the moon. I'm lighting up the moon even. Anyhow, if you'd like to get your own Olight, there's an affiliate link down below. Check her out. They're amazing. Now before I sign off, great big thanks to my patrons out there. Because of your support, I will be taking some time off work here to dedicate to my YouTube channel and prospecting. So thank you so much patrons. Because of you, I get to make these videos for all of YouTube to watch. If you'd like to become a patron and support me, there's a link here at the end of the video. Click on the link, it'll take you off to Patreon. $10 pledge goes a long ways in helping me make these videos. And because of my patrons, I'm also getting some better camera equipment coming in really soon. My Christmas present to myself. Well, my patrons Christmas present to me. 
I hope you guys enjoy these educational videos as much as you enjoy the ones where I'm just finding lots of gold. Uh, please let me know in the comments below if you prefer the educational aspect of it, the finding gold aspect of it, or maybe a combination of both. Tell me what the perfect balance is, please. And if you're new to my channel and you like what you saw here, please consider subscribing. I have hundreds of more videos on gold mining, gold panning, prospecting, rock hunting, treasure hunting, all sorts of stuff, and I will be creating lots more in the future. If you enjoy today, there's a good chance you're gonna enjoy what's to come. If you enjoyed it, leave me that like, that thumbs up, and don't forget to leave a comment of some sort. This is Dan Hurd with Dan Hurd Prospecting from my Pickerton Claim. Until the next one, everyone. Bye. Another hike out of Pickerton in the dark. Thank goodness for a good light. me just falling and up to the quad Woohoo!